Hi hey everyone, welcome. I'm Raz of Chaudhry from True Doors. And today I'm here with Sharon Tankford of the Mural Shop. Hi everybody. Our partner in Queensland. And I'm also here with Carolyn Taplin, our partner for quite some time uh, for, for large parts of Australia. And Carolyn will be helping with the Q&A session. Sharon will be talking through her work uh, and her approach and vision around custom work design in the aged care space. And I'll start the session with just a few words explaining the underlying principles of dignified dementia design. So I think actually a couple of years ago now, uh, this very illustrious group of people put together a Dignified Dementia Design Manifesto, uh, which was actually understand and reviewed through a consultation process by people in over 50 countries. And just with backgrounds quite similar to this team, you know, people with deep research experience, such as Professor Richard Fleming, now retired. Uh, people in the practitioner space and people with lived experience. Mm. And actually, the manifesto and the recommendations in this manifesto that they put together, you know, didn't come out of thin air itself. The research going all the way back to the 1980s was already pointing to the importance of co-creation or consulting with people with lived experience when you're designing a space for these people, this group to, to, to live in. Uh, and of course that then extends to consulting with the staff, visitors. The research in the 19, 90s was already pointing to the importance of creating a home-like experience, the subject of our conversation today. And then into the 2000s, the research was already showing that choice, voice, control are very important elements of design, especially as you're looking to create environments that are familiar that feel that they're on a human scale, that have helpful stimulation, that help people to live in an environment where all the design components are as familiar as possible. And as Karen, Sharon now uh, will jump in in a moment and describe some of her projects just to make the examples and her kind of explanation manageable. We focus uh, more on her vision and examples of how to do exit diversion more than other aspects of design, just because uh, it makes the examples uh, very concrete. And you can actually see how these bullet points are put into practice using a strengths-based approach, using positivity as stimulation rather than diversion, which often happens as a kind of afterthought or using uh, numb and non-space kind of stimulation. I mean, you'll, that, what I mean by that, I think will become clear. She'll of course also talk about other aspects, but primarily it will be on exit diversion and her vision because you'll really see the difference when she gives this explanation. All right, I'm gonna hand over to Sharon now and ask her to go through her. Thank you, Razeb. Thanks everyone, really nice to be here. Thank you for joining us. 
Okay, so my company is Tailored Artworks, which I began in 2006. And as a graphic designer, illustrator, interior decorator, and color psychologist with a Wicking certificate, I do hand painted artworks and murals for residential, corporate, and aged care. In 2017, I created the Mural Shop to solve the problem of spaces all looking alike. And you can create a sense of well being with our unique art finishes that are listed on the screen there. Running two brands has been overwhelming, so I'm currently merging tailored artworks into the mural shop to create a one-stop custom art solutions shop. As a dyslexic thinker, I gravitate towards commissions where I can solve problem spaces with art to create biophilic design. I value low waste design, building out construction waste, human-centered design, and minimalist designs that feel complete for residential, corporate, and aged care spaces. And in this way, my first dementia commission was for the leisure and lifestyle therapist at Queensland Health's Coinda House at Kippering for their memory assist unit. Next slide. The brief here was to stop residents from trying to escape through the cat and kitten exit door at the end of the hall. You can see my thumbnail design, which I've drawn at appointment. In preparation, Regis provided their research on visual spatial perception and their architect devised on lighting and door safety. And I was hooked because it all fascinated me. Over the years, through lots of experiences on what gets results, I've developed a unique take on exit door disguise, including residents should feel okay that they can see there, but not go there. There should be a sense of freshness and natural imagery relevant to your location. And green's a great color for this. I did Excuse highly- Excuse me, Sharon. Sorry, Sharon, Sorry. Was it, we haven't got any slides. Oh. Sorry, Sharon. Shall I start again? No, it's okay. Let me share the slide. Oh, I wondered why everything was... Uh... Thanks, Caroline. Sorry, because I can only see you, Razem. I can't see no, the slides. Okay, that uh, explains a lot. Sorry, everybody. Technology is great until you have to use it, isn't it? All right. Okay. Sorry. Um, all right. So I'll start. From, I'll just start from the from the beginning of this slide. Sure. Yeah. So the brief here, everyone, was to stop residents from trying to escape through the cat and kitten exit door at the end of the hall. You can see my thumbnail design, which I drew at the appointment. In preparation, Regis provided their research on visual spatial perception, and their architect advised on lighting and door safety. And so I was hooked because this all fascinated me. Over the years, through lots of experiences on what gets results, I've developed a unique take on exit door disguise, including residents should feel okay that they can see there, but not go there. There should be a sense of freshness and natural imagery relevant to your location. And green's a great color for this. I did a highly luminous contrasting colors. For instance, the 70 percentile difference but more often, I'll use a squint test to check. Using cues, I'll engage residents' reminiscence through objects, animals, scenery, pastimes, and plants, and then styling these cues relevant to the interior decor and architectural style. And lastly, designing very closely to door frames, scenes, shadows, handles, and keypads, etc. The goal is often to conceal the door handle and or create an illusion of height which I'll show you. Regis loved their mural and said that the residents would appreciate the view, turn around and happily walk away from the door. The mural gave staff time back while transforming the commercial appearance into a more home-like vibe. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, for Regis Wellington Point, the briefs were the same. Stop congregation at staff entrances and create peepholes for staff to check if anyone was standing at the door. Add to this, create designs sympathetic to their interior decor style. The top example, the gent who lived in front of the door was aggressive and possessive of it. Two thirds of the way finished, he came out, put his hand up to his forehead and peered out into the horizon for his family. No one there. And so he's calmly turned around and happily walked off much to my relief after two days of being grumbled at. A lower example, the lady living there was hiding behind the door. 
Staff explain, she now walks up to it, admires the garden, twitters to the birds and happily walks off. In both designs, peepholes were made using the existing glass windows with drilled plyboard panels over them. Next slide. Blue Care Rothwell wanted a door design to discourage residents to enter, to sorry, encourage residents to enter their quiet room. This design directs people's attention away from the door handles and keypads towards points of reminiscence in the form of the birdcage, stained glass windows and fireplace. Using a dog peering into a dark window, curiosity is roused. This is reinforced with a brightly striped door and a clear gang cubby entry sign over a highly visible door handle. It was lots of fun. And in both of these examples, the doors merge into the space by painting the skirting boards and data rails across them to convey a continued architecture. Cues such as the birdcage, fireplace, stained glass windows, which is painted onto perspex, period toys, fun wall sculpture, plates and stylized wall finishes all help to trigger memories to soothe and positively engage residents. In the second example, the goal was to discourage residents from accessing the dangerous kitchen area and to encourage them to stay longer in the dining room. Concealing the door and using orange and red orange color psychology made the room feel cozier and potentially engage their appetite. Next slide. Wesley Mission's brief here was to increase community usage of their foyer and its two hallways, conceal the stairwell and two nurses station entry points and get residents drinking from the fountain and stop them asking for the way out. And so using the retro industrial architectural style, the space was transformed into an inner city parkscape between buildings. I created an out and about, out and about vibe. As a result, the exit door looks like the outside of an office entry point, which residents are not interested in. The green carpet and a three tree mural and a lovely new park bench saw residents sitting down for a happy nap. In the same space, cabinetry built over the fire station electricity box painted into a tree trunk reinforced the out and about park vibe. Down the hall, door wraps concealed the two nurses stations. And in particular, everyone loved the purple wrap with the closed sign on it, which together with the green door wrap reduced people wanting to enter. For reminiscence and theme, the large custom painted stairwell artwork reminded elders of happy days out at South Bank. Next slide. Photography and vector art is commercial looking. And as you know, residents who think that they're in a hospital want to leave. In contrast, art creates a more home-like physical environment. Our goal for exit door disguises is that residents don't notice the door. They reminisce, feel happy and move on. However, for cupboards, you want residents to not open the doors and spread their contents facility wide. Beautiful, meaningful images like children's art can conceal them. Alternatively, a fun idea, if there is a good maintenance man, is to follow our easy instructions to theme a row of cupboards into a delightful row of beach huts for that out and about vibe. The beach hut series features highly visible locks that instantly convey to residents that the beach huts are private property. People understand that they're not meant to open this door. Much of my work is about social do's and don'ts to reduce friction in the lived environment. In turn, good design, prevents issues that frees up staff time. The goal is to imbue a genuinely home-like environment that feels safe. Next slide. Here for Coolabar Aged Care's glass doors, we created the illusion of being high above the beach and looking through an inaccessible balcony. See there, but not go there. This wrap used our glass film. The second design using our opaque film blends the wall and skirting board colors to clearly suggest that one can look out the window, pat the dog and move on. Next slide. And finally, as you know, doors come in all shapes, configurations, sizes and materials. And so my challenge was to work out a way using my existing art collection to custom fit various doors. In addition, 
Our door disguises and diversions match Trudor's natural looking velvet matte finish. The goal is that staff don't have to live calming and directing residents away from the keypad locked exit doors or answering their questions, how do I get out? We want to reduce their stress and anxiety so people stay relaxed, they don't get depressed and worsen their dementia. So thanks everybody and uh, I'll hand you back to Razeb now. Cheers. Thanks Sharon, that was great. Really clear and uh, wonderfully visual and warm. You're welcome. So. Okay, so I'm going to talk through two examples of two Trudeau's projects. One is from St. Vincent's in Castledine. It's very close to Sharon in Brisbane. And the second is actually from the other side of the world in Vancouver Island in Canada. And uh, let me talk through and then maybe build in my story as I, as I describe the projects. So here's St. Vincent's. And they wanted to create more home-like, less institutional feeling corridors. And they wanted to imbue a sense of ownership for residents. So they went through a very person-centered selection process where Really, there was a lot of choice given to each of the elders and they were supported in making those choices. So here you can see laminated sheets put on boards in the dining area. Here you can see staff helping elders make their choices. You see in the second photo, little cut out on the door just to double check, remind, look at how the corridor might look with all the different choices. You see this printout catalog that they made make it easier to select. And then here are some before, here is a before shot. And here you see the same doors and you see immediately the kind of change from an institutional and impersonal kind of look to something that looks much more personalized and friendly. So a few examples of the doors and you can see everybody is just really selected according to their taste, their personality, their memory of a door. So of course the feel of the unit has improved. People know that these are their doors to their spaces. And as has been the case with many of our projects has increased socializing and just fun had around the process and also after the doors are, are applied, people talk, walk around looking at the doors, their talking points, good conversation starters. And here's a short film with somebody giving feedback. It's very nice, really lovely. I like it very like that. It's more, more, more not, not like home. <laughs> You're out, you know, on a nice place. It's very nice. Um, here's a short video where you just look through the corridors and I think it just gives a, a nice idea that you can see how the decals he would, can help with wayfinding because you see the, that you have these signposts everywhere, these individualized doors. So um, what could be a, a maze-like environment becomes much clearer and somewhere that's much easier to find your way, orient on where you are. Here's a project, one I mentioned, from Vancouver Island in Canada. 
And they also took a very person-centered approach and they documented their process very well. So I think it's a good example just to show how people do a project. So Glacier View Lodge. So their kind of tagline at the end has been, uh, it doesn't just feel like home, it looks like home. They actually found out about Trudeau's way back in 2016 from social media. Took them a little while to get the funding together. But once they did, uh, they were able to engage the family and resident councils very enthusiastically. And together, they put together a plan and organized as a really a, a community exercise then during COVID, a way to get the project going and selected and put in place. They wanted to create a home-like environment. They wanted to create a greater sense of security. Uh, what we've noticed time and time again is of course that people walk don't walk into the wrong room as often because each door is signposted as this is my door, uh, which helps with creating more of a feeling of safety. You don't have people just wandering into your room unannounced. And as I mentioned, this community aspect, building relationships and adding to more of a neighborhood feel. So you see, they made these kind of short, small templates where people could make a short list and then select one from our collection that suits their taste, reminds them of a door from their past home. And here you see that they took a lot of pictures during the application process. It was the staff, volunteers that applied the doors. And you can see just the expression of individuality as everybody selects a door that suits them, that they would like. And you can see such a wide range in this special care unit, in the main unit, happy people in front of their doors. And here, so I really enjoy this, you know, people, when we first started this project, Back, back in 2014, we were thinking that you know, people would be picking a door that they uh, had lived behind, something that was familiar to them. And here and there, we started to see more and more examples of people actually picking doors that were aspirational, <laughs> doors that they finally want, that they finally got, that they had wanted to something, a style, a look, a feel that they wanted for their front door. So I, I just love the, this, na this narrative aspect of it that, you know, the story continues and you, you continue to have aspirations that you can fulfill while you're in long-term care. And here you see the Rose Garden where yet another selection of doors all looking different, making a much more vibrant space and a thank you from the coastal community. So I don't, what, what we're gonna do now is open up for questions. I can see that there are some chats, but I won't try to play with my screen to look at them. I'll ask Carolyn to just let, let me know if there's anything there that we should answer, uh, if she hasn't already. And there's also a Q&A feature which you can click on to ask any questions that you might have. There was just a question from Bronwyn Razeb that I answered, which was, do the residents pay for this themselves or have the organisations paid for it? So okay. and my answer was that um, for most of these projects, it's been organised by facilities and they've fund, fundraised or found the budget to do that, but that we do have provision for individuals um, through the website to be able to choose something and for families to choose something that they can um, apply just on a door. But what has happened... Uh, in the project that I've been involved with is that 
when a few people were interested in doing that for themselves, the organization recognized that um, they wanted the whole corridor to look uh, differently. And so we waited and they found the money to be able to do that as a, as a facility project. Perfect, thank you. I think I see a question come in to, has come into the Q&A. Uh... Yes, it says we have door wraps in our memory unit and love them, but we would like wraps for the lifts. Do you have this? Well, okay. Sharon did. Yeah. Didn't you, Sharon? Exactly. Yeah, yes, definitely. I do. Yes. Um, so we, we can print wraps on an opaque film, very much the same as True Door's um, room door wraps for wayfinding. Um, we can use either art with this, or we can custom design something, or we have a print your own um, service as well, um, depending on, you know, the space and, and exactly what you're wanting to achieve from the products in the area. Thanks, Sharon. I think we'll connect you after the call, Nat. That'd be lovely. All right. Okay. Thanks everyone. If there is a, if there are any more questions, I'm gonna just go to the next slide. All right, so following the session, what we'll do is share the recording. And because I didn't share the screen properly at the beginning, I'll also send through the slides. So you can actually see the bulleted list that I was talking around at the beginning, which describes the underlying principles for dignified dementia design. Mm. And also Sharon has put together an inspiration book, which shows more of a complete picture of some of the imagery and provides more information about um, the more of a sensory environment that she's able to create with the custom artwork primer initially, and now what's morphed into being able to provide a printed but art look um, work for the aged care environment. And the last bullet there describes the report that we published quite a few years ago now. Uh, but that in that report, you'll see references to the research from the 80s, the 90s, and the early 2000s that I referred to. And uh, if you need to, uh, you know, demonstrate to people in your team or other decision makers, uh, the basis for the things being said here, you can look back into the bibliography of that report. The report also shares examples actually from around the world where people have created reminiscent, reminiscent spaces, um, uh, home-like environments, and you just see images uh, and, and short stories around the, the motivation of those projects and what they, what, what they were able to achieve. And the last chapter actually shares feedback on Trudeau's projects from all over. And the two examples that I showed were, uh, you know, really at one end of the spectrum of the way that projects, Trudeau's projects or custom projects can be organized, these very person-centered projects where every elder is supported in selecting their door. At the other end, you have, of course, the desire to create a more home-like and friendly environment, but maybe not the organization, uh, organizational possibility or um, to enable, help people to make those choices. So you have a smaller group of people selecting doors and uh, or for, for the elders. Um, so you, in that report, you also get feedback on different types of projects um, and you can see the types of feedback that comes through depending on how the project has been organized. All right. Thanks everyone. Very Thank grateful. You. Yeah. Very grateful that you've been able to join today. We'll share this recording, uh, this session recording and leave it to you to share it with your teams and here. At the bottom of the slide, you can see our email addresses that you can reach out to. We'll connect Sharon with, uh, is it, I, I can't remember the name, maybe it wasn't mentioned, uh, the person that asked the question about the lift doors. And wish you uh, a great day and hope to connect with you soon. Okay. Thanks very much.
拜拜。